Russian air defense in Crimea is under threat. Ukraine disables all these systems. To disable Russian air defense systems, Ukraine does not need to destroy all launchers. Losing the radar already puts the system out of action. These nuances were explained by aviation expert and leading researcher at the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, Valery Romanenko, for Channel 24 in the context of preparing large-scale operations in Crimea. In general, when a radar is hit, the entire complex becomes inoperable until it is replenished with a new radar, despite the fact that in general the launchers may be undamaged. Romanenko notes, attacks on air defense in Crimea continue in parallel with attacks on the Belgorod region and attacks by Ukrainian drones on facilities of the Russian military industrial complex. At the same time, Valery Romanenko notes that operations in Crimea and in the Belgorod region have different goals. In the first case, this is preparation for future strikes to destroy the enemy's logistics. In the second, the protection of frontline territories that the Russians are attacking with the help of the S-300. Recall, Ukrainian forces struck around 15 air defense systems in Russian-occupied Crimea over the past two months. The Ukrainian military recently hit several S-300, S-350 and S-400 air defense systems, according to the statement. Ukraine also struck more than 15 radar stations and over 10 control centers stationed in Russian-occupied peninsula. The military sites were located in Crimean settlements Chornomorsk, Tarkankut, Yevpatoria, Saki, Donsk, Belbek, Sevastopol, Alushta, Zankoy, Mysov, and near Ipetri Peak, according to the map published by Ukraine's Center for Strategic Communications. Ukraine has carried out several successful attacks against Russian targets in occupied Crimea and its vicinity, heavily degrading the Russian Black Sea Fleet. Air defense losses apparently made Moscow nervous enough to move the latest S-500 systems to the peninsula, Ukraine's military intelligence chief Kirillo Budanov said. Taiwan learning from Ukraine to prepare for attack of China, Ireland's vice president. Taipei is studying the tactics being employed by the Ukrainian military against Russia in its preparations for a potential attack. The island's new vice president, Cao Bikim, has said. Her comments come as Taiwanese president Lai ching tae has been voicing concerns that Beijing, which sees Taiwan as an inalienable part of its territory, has allegedly outlined the island's annexation and the elimination of the Republic of China as the great rejuvenating cause of its people, suggesting that the mainland would stop at nothing to take control of the island. Speaking at an event hosted by Chatham House, a British think tank in London, Bikim insisted that Taiwan must reform and decentralize its military command structure, adding that the government is actively learning from Ukraine's defense, where smaller combat forces have proven nimble and adaptable. The vice president, who was elected last month, further claimed that authoritarian regimes were seeking to influence and destabilize other nations through hybrid operations such as political warfare, cyber intrusion, economic coercion, and the threat of military force. In light of this supposed threat, Bikim stated that the Taiwanese government has already taken a number of steps to boost its ability to react in the event of an attack. These include the doubling of the island's defense budget, extending mandatory military service from four months to a year, the prioritization of new arms acquisitions and other measures, some of which have been inspired by Ukraine, she said. At the same time, despite the geopolitical tensions, the vice president also suggested the possibility of enabling commercial partnerships with the mainland, stating that Taipei has an interest in working with people across the Taiwan Strait in forging a stable environment in which people can pursue prosperity. Meanwhile, Beijing has denounced Taiwan's new government, branding its new president a dangerous separatist and launching military exercises around the island following Lai's inauguration last month. The Chinese government has continued to insist that it remains committed to peaceful reunification, but has warned that such a prospect is increasingly being eroded by separatists for Taiwan's independence and foreign forces, according to Chinese Defense Minister Dong Jun.